So welcome back to DMDIY. Um, I just purchased a boat. I bought it for 1500 It's a, I believe a 92 Avanti 170FS with a 75 horsepower, um, about 1990 Mercury motor. And uh, the motor is in great shape. The boat needs some work. You can see here we have a rotten transom. But uh, that's that's really the only you know main thing wrong with the boat. So I think um, getting the motor running, just checking the compression, all that stuff, doing a little bit of a diagnosis today, and then later working on that transom. I think that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be a bit of a boat restoration series, and um, you know, let's go ahead and take a look in the boat. You can see here we got some tires that aren't you know aren't too bad. Pretty nice solid trailer. Um, the guy I bought it from was being a little bit suspicious when he was selling it. But, you know, that didn't stop me. He was kind of lying to me, saying it was a different year than it was. And he had gotten all this work done on it, you know, trying to trying to make the sale. And, uh, you know, I still liked it. It felt right. A bit of an intuition with it. So, uh, you know, I, I went ahead and bought it anyway. Whether or not he was lying, I, you know, I still wanted the boat. So, But anyway, well, you know. Got some uh, bilge plugs in there. You know, even the cushions are in really good shape. Um, the floor isn't rock solid, I would say. You know, over here it's a little bit, a little bit uh, mushy, but I think that's something we can fix pretty easily. So first in here we got, I believe, a live well. Um, got a live well in there. Uh, trolling motor probably gonna have to be replaced. You can see the, you know, tilt up, tilt down, and little 12 volt outlet and stuff for it and here we got uh oh my it seems as though there's <laughs> it seems as though there's like a raccoon or, or a little rat a little rat corpse in there with some tails like some squirrel tails or something looks like three rows of teeth on it that's kind of weird not sure what was going on in there but either way it's very odd let's see what we got in here Okay, we got some sort of hose. We got a uh, oh more animal parts, and then in, I think all those hoses have to do with the bilge pump or something, or perhaps the live well drain, you know. And then we got, of course, you know the little glove compartment. Had that popped open. Let's take that down. Looks like some sort of ski rope or something. And then uh, down here we got a little stowaway for the you know, illicit activities or whatever. Probably put like a first aid kit in there, a little, you know, some oars or something, in case you break down, which I've done before. Wasn't a good time. Looks like a G uh, fish finder or GPS or something. RPM, little cluster gauge. Let's see. I don't know what that is, but it's popping out. Oh, just a little, okay, a little clip. That'll be easy to put on later. Uh, real nice seats as well. You can see we got some good-looking seats. They they're you know probably newer than the boat or uh, yeah probably purchased those at a later date. Um, we got a little rod holder over there. And yeah, you know the motor. It, uh, I put a battery in it already. So the motor seems to go in gear, which is good. And then, uh, let's see what we got in here. Another live well. Under the seats, uh, looks like a little place for a chair to go, and I'm sure the same is under there. All right. Now let's see what we got in here. And he was using these 2x4s to keep the uh, boat cover on, keep it from sinking down in the middle so water wouldn't pool. And we got a nice gas tank. Looks like aluminum. Whether or not it's rotted out at the bottom, you know, and has a hole in it, we'll find out later. So yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and do a quick diagnosis on the motor and see if it's even worth saving. And then if it is, we'll um, build an engine hoist pop the motor off and then proceed to work on that transom. First I'm going to go ahead and take it down so we're able to get a better look at it. Let's see. Come on, 
Come on down. So the hydraulic system, uh, that's another thing that he mentioned. It was actually out. Let's crack it on open. The, uh, the water pump exit is zip tied on there. That's fine. We can work with that. Let's go ahead and leave it dangling then. All right. Well, this spark plug's coming right out, so let's hope no water was getting in there. That's going to really suck. Okay. So these are a bit of an odd spark plug. I think the... Uh, Maybe the piston cylinder comes down and like gets close or something. Or actually maybe it just jumps a, uh, it either jumps a gap across these two or it jumps a gap with the cylinder head. Not too sure, but either way, these are maybe an older way of doing it for the spark plugs. Yeah, BU uh, HW2. I actually went to AutoZone. They only had, you know, two of them in stock and I had to, they were like, oh, you can drive across town to get some. And I'm like, well, <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. Right, I'll just wait till y'all get some. So let's go ahead and take one of those out and get our compression tester. Aha! You see, I didn't need that little adapter. Just need this one. I think that'll work just fine. Because the spark. The actual spark heads were uh, real small, you know. All right, so that's working good. Let's go ahead and stick it somewhere you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna put a battery in as well. Brand new battery, dual purpose. Or, uh, you know, a deep cycle uh, CCA, yada, yada, yada. I think it's like 800 amp too, nice battery. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and then we'll try to uh, turn the engine over and see if we can get uh, a reading. Okay, so we just hooked up the battery and then um, right after I had touched the positive terminal, um, on you know the positive wires, bilge pump started running. So that's a real good sign. I just turned it off on the dashboard. I don't know why it's working with uh, out the key, but anyway, yeah. Let's make sure it's in neutral, and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this engine over. See what that compression is. Didn't quite sound right, did it? Huh. That sounded like the starter was spinning, but it wasn't turning the motor. As if the gears aren't connected or something in there. So let's go ahead and take a peeky poo. Oh, lost the gasket. Oh boy. All right. Okay. So these aren't actually touching at all. I think, okay, yeah, yeah, that's an easy fix, I believe. All right, there we go. So now it's engaged, and let's check here. Okay, so it's looking like we're at 90 PSI, which is, um, of course, within the margin of, of operation, but I'm gonna crank it over a little bit more, see if we can get that to run a little, bit, a little bit higher. Now 
Let's see what we're looking like. 90. Okay, so that one's stuck at 90. That's still uh, reasonable, and I think, you know, 70, 60 is when you you get real worried. I think, actually, if we let the motor run a little bit too, it might actually uh, fastly fix that issue. Okay, so on that one, we're running about 90 as well. So, good news so far, good news. Now let's check the last one. so loose to the touch I can pull all these <laughs> I can pull all these out without actually uh, needing a wrench which leads me to believe the guy who owned it previously didn't know what he was doing just like me yeah that's kind of the funny thing about uh, buying the boat is I couldn't tell if the guy was lying to me trying to sell it or he actually didn't know uh, what he was talking about. So, could be a good thing or a bad thing, perhaps, you know. Well, hello. Yeah, that uh, pit bull's running amok on my property. But I'm not going to stop him. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. All right. Let's check it again. Okay, this one is a little bit higher than 90. Running about, um, looks like maybe 95 to 100, maybe 110. So uh, I hope that doesn't cause any issues with the motor, having one with a higher compression, uh, maybe an instability in the idle or, or something like that. So yeah, that's good. This engine is giving all the indications of uh, serviceability, right? Of course, I haven't checked any of the oil or anything like that, but. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and put the cover on, all that stuff, get it get it uh, water, you know, resistant. And then we're going to head over to the shop for building the DIY engine hoist. Get this thing off of this boat where we can work on that transom, cut it out, get it looking brand new.